Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to cover setting up a Postgres database connection with FastAPI and implementing some basic CRUD functionality. The first thing to do is to install our dependencies. We have FastAPI, which is the framework we're using, and UVCorn, which we're going to use to run our app. SQL Alchemy is our SQL toolkit, and Psychop G2 is a database driver for Postgres. Finally, we have Alembic, which is the migration tool for use with SQL Alchemy. Then I'm going to freeze out the requirements to make it easier to install next time. Now that's done, we'll create our main.py file. For now, I'm just going to create the app, but do nothing with it. We'll come back to that in a bit. Now none of this is going to work if we don't have a database, so I'm going to run a Postgres container with Docker. I'm going to create a make file to make the commands easy to remember. I'm going to add a run db command. This will give us an easy way to run our database container. Now we can run our database using make run dash db. Next, we want to set up a connection to the database for our API. So I'm going to create a database.py file. In the file, I'm going to define our connection URL for the database and set up a connection. I also want to add a declarative base to use with our database models later. And then I want to define a function to retrieve a database session. This way we can import the function in other files later to get a session to use. The next step is to create our models. For this example, I'm going to create a single model for a job. First, we want to import the data types we'll be using, which is an integer and a string. Then we need to import the column. And our final import is the declarative base from our database file. Then we can create a class for our model, passing in the base. We've set the table name to jobs, and I've defined an integer ID, which will be our primary key, and title and description string columns that are not nullable. Now that we have a database connection, and we know what our model will look like, we need to update the database to create the table using a migration. First, we have to initialize Alembic. This will generate an Alembic directory in your project and create an Alembic ini file in the root of your project. We need to open that Alembic ini file to modify the connection. Find the sqlalchemy.url property and change it to point at your running database instance. Now we can create our first migration to initialize our table. This creates a script under the Alembic versions directory. First, we want to implement the upgrade function to create the table. This creates a table with our jobs name and defines the three columns to create which match our model. Then we want to implement the downgrade function in case we need to revert the migration. This will simply drop the table with the name jobs. Now our migration is written, we can run it against our database. We need to add the endpoints in our API to perform operations on the database. Since we have no data yet, we can create a post endpoint to create a new entry in the table. First, we want to create a schema to map the requester, so I'm going to create a schemas file. In here, we want to import the base model from Pydantic. And then I'm going to create a create job request schema that will expect the title and description properties passed in. Back in our main file, we can add our post endpoint, but first we need to make some changes to our imports. We need to add the import for the schema we created so we can use it to map the request body to. We also need to update our import to bring in the getdb function from our database file that we defined earlier so that we can get a database session to use. I've also included importing the session from SQL Alchemy so that we can use it as a type definition. We're also going to want to change the fast API import to bring in depends. This will let us use dependency injection on the getdb function to make sure it's provided each time the endpoint is hit. And finally, we need to bring in the model we defined earlier so that we can use it with the database. Now we can add a post endpoint. This has a details parameter for our schema and we're bringing in the database session using depends. 
Using these, we're going to create a new instance of our model, add it to the database and commit that change. I've included the ID in the response to make it easier to check for that record later. You can now run the API using Uvicom and we can make a request using curl to create a new item in our database. Now we can add a get endpoint to return the item that was just created. This is going to take an integer ID parameter, which is the record to obtain. And again, we'll use depends to get a database session to use. The endpoint is going to query the database, check for the ID and return the first matching item. Again, we can use a curl command to check that this is working. Running that, we can see the details of our object returned. Finally, I want to add a delete endpoint. Same as the get endpoint, this will take the ID of the record as a parameter and we'll get a database session using depends. In this endpoint, we're going to query the database using the ID, but instead of grabbing the first record, we'll call delete on it. We commit the change and return whatever we want to here. We can check this works using curl again. We've passed it the ID of a record that exists and the item will be deleted. Now, if we try and use the get endpoint again to retrieve that record, it won't be found and will instead return null. You've now got a fast API app connected to a Postgres database and have CRUD functionality added. Please like and subscribe if you found this useful. If anything was unclear, please drop a comment below and I'll try to help out or check out the GitHub link in the description. Thanks for watching.